Thank you so much. You are too kind to me. It's uh, such a moving privilege and honor to be here today, uh, Chancellor. Um, I want to say that I believe uh, we are the choices that we make, no nothing more and, and nothing less. And, and you being here today, um, us being here today, really shows that, that, that we choose and we chose and will continue to choose excellence. Of course, I understand that, that uh, we are very different uh, one from the other. Our areas of expertise even are very different. I certainly am not an expert in everything that you studied. Um, and I assume most of you uh, don't have uh, 21 medals in a drawer somewhere. <laughs> But the one thing I know, and the one thing I have learned in, in over 20 years of high performance is that in the end, um, it doesn't matter who we are, where we come from, and what we choose to accomplish with the time, talents, and potential that we have. One thing I know for sure is that we all will have to face many, many challenges just to get to where we want to go. And I believe that how we choose to face those challenges really is what will make a big difference in the success that we will have. Uh, and to me, this, this amazing uh, Paralympic journey did start with one big challenge, as you know, and, and that is, of course, the challenge of my accident. Um, as we said, I was 13 when I had this accident, in, in a farm accident, one of a, a very simple accident, like it still happens too often. We were visiting some friends of the family. Uh, uh, and the farm was abandoned and disaffected, and so as soon as we got there, the, the message from the parents was quite clear. Uh, we, the children at 12 and 13, uh, were not allowed to go play on the farm because it was dangerous. So, um, of course, being 13, the very first thing we decided to do was to go play on the farm, which was not the brightest idea. Uh, and we had this big plan. This was the big uh, era, uh, and the first era of the BMX bicycle. We all had one, and uh, there was this big barn door that was broken down, laying on the ground, and we decided we were going to lift the door put some sort of a crate underneath it and transform it into some sort of a jumping ramp for the BMX bicycle, which is what we did. Uh, and myself, uh, it, well, you know, it took 10 seconds for, for my life to change forever. Um, I was holding the door and the friend that was with me just left for a few minutes to put a crate underneath it. And uh, at the age of 13, with not as much muscles as, as I did when I was racing, I wasn't able to hold that door very long, and, and the door fell on me and, and broke my spine, and that's how I became a paraplegic uh, very young. And the reason I'm talking about it, uh, clearly I'm not trying to make anybody feel sorry for me, that certainly is not my type, but I realized that uh, when we face those big challenges and, and sometimes tragedies in life, they are the times that are the most difficult for us that we have to face, but they're also the times where uh, we learn the most about, about life and, and about ourselves. And I guess what I learned from that accident and from the months after where your life really is, is thrown in, into chaos because an accident like this one, you don't, you don't plan for it, you don't see it happening, you don't want it to happen, but when it's there, it's there and you need to face it. And, and just a feeling of everything be, being out of control. And I guess what I learned from this that was going to, to stay with me for my life was that in a situation where you lose control over everything, um, perhaps you're, the only control you have let, left is, is the control over your own emotions and over your attitude. Uh, and I learned from that accident that attitude is really everything and is really what will make the biggest difference in, in your life. And that's really what stayed with me and what sent me on that journey of becoming uh, a Paralympic athlete and medalist and took me through what we said earlier, Barcelona, Atlanta, Sydney, Athens, and Beijing. And, and on that journey, 
I have to say that you meet, uh, you meet so many people, but you meet in general like two types of people. You meet people who will doubt you and you will meet people who will believe in your dreams no matter how crazy those dreams are and those goals are. When I had my accident, I had so many people who, um, who felt sorry for me and thought that you know I could not have the life that I did have, and yet I had other people who just knew that there was no limit to me and, and, and so much potential. When I started wheelchair racing, uh, it was still a very young sport, and uh, uh, it was such a challenge just to be recognized and to get sponsorship and to get those results and just to, to have the, the, the recognition that you deserve as an athlete. And when I decided that I wanted to make wheelchair racing my life and a career, uh, I had a lot of people who were half smiling because it had never been done before in Canada and it sounded like it was so impossible. And yet, I had my coach, I had my agent, I had so many people who believed in, in that dream and thought that this was the right time to do something like that and that it was possible. And the same thing when I retired in Beijing. We landed in China. Um, entering five events and trying to break and, and to make history and, and to win five Paralympic gold medal for the first time and it had never been done before. And a lot of people thought uh, it, was, it was plain crazy and that, uh, it, you know, it was too ambitious. It had never been done. It was impossible. And yet, uh, with the team that believed in me, uh, we went after those medals one by one during 16 days, and we came back home with five Paralympic gold medal. So to me, this is really the proof that, that it is possible. It is also the proof that you have to believe in yourself, and you have to surround yourself with people who will believe in you and your goals and your dreams, no matter how crazy those dreams will be. And when I look back, uh, and I look back at the little girl that I was, I look at the medals uh, that I won in Beijing and that journey. Uh, I look at myself here today with this amazing, uh, unique recognition. Uh, and it really, to me, is the proof that, like I said before, it doesn't matter who we are, where we come from, and, and, and what we choose to do and accomplish with that life and that time that we have. Uh, I know for sure that there are no such things as too big a goal and too big a dream, and that we all have what it takes to make those happen. And I want to leave you with just a, a small uh, piece of advice. Uh, like I said, I don't know your expertise and who you are and what you will do, but no matter what it is that you will do, uh, just, just try in your life, just try to make sure that you, uh, you never suffer from, from ADD, Adventure Deficit Disorder. <laughs> <laughs> because... <laughs> yeah. Because, because life, everybody will tell you, uh, it has a tendency to want to get too serious. It has a tendency to put a lot of weight and responsibility on your shoulder. It will get complicated. It will get busy. And, and in the middle of all that, I think it is crucial that we always remember that it needs to be fun. It needs to be passionate. And we need to live it uh, every day with, with all we have. Uh, and this really is uh, my wish uh, for you. Uh, may your life be uh, the greatest of, of adventures. Merci. Thank you.